Okay, good morning. Today our topic is recruitment and selection. So everyone knows what is recruitment, right? And everyone knows what is selection. But I'm sure everyone doesn't know what is the difference between the two. We'll see that as we go along. So recruitment is the process of search for and securing applicants. You search and secure, that is you come to know who are the applicants for the various job positions so that the right people in the right number can be selected to fill the job positions which arise from time to time in the organization. Now, as you have noted, this topic is following the topic of human resource planning. Planning was to plan for and this is the implementation. We actually get the people. Okay. The process of selection and placement follows sequentially after the recruitment. The total process of recruitment and selection and the placement can be called the process of hiring. Okay. So, three components to that. First is recruitment, then selection and then you actually hire or you can call it appointment. Right. Some of the factors which affect recruitment, some are internal factors and some are external factors. Internal factors, size of organization, right. If it is bigger, then it is easier. Why do you think? Because it is well known. You say Tata's or L and T or Reliance, all the people know about this company. But if you say Shamlal Maniklal, private limited, people do not know about that. It is a small company, okay, maybe 10, 12 people, so it is more difficult. So, we call brand equity. You have heard the term brand equity? Brand, IIT and some uh, Popatmal Institute of Technology that does not have the brand equity, people have never heard of it, whereas IIT has brand equity. Okay. So, recurring recruitment policy, whether internal or external recruiting. So, this is another factor. Some people have a policy that we will try to fill vacancies by promotions from internal sources, because we have already people whom are tried and tested, we know how they work okay. and therefore, they must get the opportunity also to keep them motivated. So, many companies have this policy, but sometimes you have a situation where you have vacancy and you have to take from outside, because that skill that you require may not be available or people may not be ready to fill up that post. So, you go to the external sources and the policies are there. Image of organization by product or service quality or public relations or patronage or promotions, sponsoring of events community service, etcetera. So, image of organization is the same as, all right, same concept as brand equity, what I talked about, that is the image. And there are various ways in which the companies, they build their image. One of the popular ways is sponsoring events, right. Say World Cup is going on, you sponsor the World Cup. That means, you give the prizes, you give the money for the prizes. And in return, what happens? The media, that is the television, all right, they will flash your banner. They will always say this is sponsored by Reliance or sponsored by Tata's. So, that way you build the image that you are a patron of the sporting activity of the nation. So, you get a good image amongst the members of the general public. And then there are many other ways in which you can build image. Image of the job, see one was the company, then the image of the job itself type of work, remuneration, growth prospects, working conditions, self-development opportunities. So, in order to attract people to join your company, you not only give the image of the company, but also the type of job, build the image for the job. That is an exciting job. All right. There is learning to be had here for your own self-development and so on. Okay. Any questions? Those were the internal factors. Now, we come to the 
external factors, demographic factors that is sex, age, literacy, economic status, etcetera, labor market, right type and quantity, unemployment situation, simpler in areas of high unemployment, obviously, is not it. If you go to a backward area where there are so few jobs, many people are unemployed and you advertise even for a very low skill job and you will have thousands and thousands of applications. Remember it was in the newspaper a few months ago, railways were recruiting. yes recruiting for a lower level job and riots took place because there was such huge number of applications. See that people congregated there, it was difficult to control the crowd. So, if you have areas where there is more unemployment, it is easier to recruit. Then labor laws, these cover working conditions, compensation, retirement, benefits, child labor, safety and health, etcetera. If you have very stringent labor laws, right, then that is one of the factors which will affect external factors which will affect your recruitment and legal considerations, reservations for various categories. So, if you have a got a certain uh, standard of people that you want to recruit, all right, these people must have these qualifications, but at the same time there is legislation for reservation of various categories. Sometimes they may clash with each other, you may not be able to find the right people of your standard or quality to fill those reserve posts. So, these are some of the factors which the HR manager has to keep in consideration when he is recruiting. Okay. Then labor laws, these cover working conditions, compensation, etcetera, there are requirements about local labor being taken, requirements about first giving your requirement to the employment exchange, you cannot just advertise for certain categories of job. And the employment exchange then will from amongst those who have registered with them, send you the people and then you look at the people. Okay. So, initiative will not be yours. So, those were some of the factors which affect the recruitment. Now, we come to recruitment sources. If you are setting up a factory, green field factory in a certain town, maybe not in a backward area, but in the rural area let us say. Then where from are you going to get your people? So, recruitment sources, internal sources of course, we said is always a possibility depending on your company's policies all right and which means from present employees from employee referrals referrals means there are some people who are referred to you that we have sending the biodata of so and so please see whether you can fit him in into your organization so these are referrals then uh, former employees all right those who may have left you for a better job then found out that they made a mistake because in fact your job was better than the job he thought was better wants to come back it's not very infrequent in good organizations when people leave younger people they leave because they get a better salary offer from a smaller organization because smaller organizations reason in this manner that if he has been selected by tatas or lnt that means he must be good because they have a strict recruitment process and a selection process. So, why we should go to the trouble of again trying to advertise and recruit and select. Let us only take people who are in good companies and attract them by giving a higher salary, higher benefits, which they would have to wait for if they continued in their existing company. So, they give that lure, the attraction and people leave, but often they find out that money is not everything because the working conditions may not be very good. Maybe they have got company policies which are very restrictive. They inhibit your self development. Maybe the power is so centralized that you may have a higher salary, you may have a higher title, but you do not enjoy that power. So, recognition may not be there. So, a host of other things they probably find out and then they want to come back again. So, therefore, this is a source also. We call it internal because he has worked with you before and they are former employees. Okay. And what is the benefit to the company? 
he is a tried and tested person, he has been with you. Because every time you recruit and finally select, remember you are running a risk. Whatever interview you may do, can you really within a half an hour or one hour interview and some data which has been given and which you asked for, can you really ensure that he is the right person? Very often you realize you made a mistake. Whereas a former employee who left of his own accord, you know he was a good employee. But some companies have policies that they do not take back former employees. So, you have to see that there are companies. Why they make the policy? Because their top management have a feeling that if they have left, all right, they did not have either loyalty to your company or if they have left, it will be a bad motivating factor for existing employees because they are hoping to be promoted. Someone left and you take him or her back. So, there are many considerations like this why some companies have a policy not to take back former employees. Yes. Referring, say, say you are the HR manager and I all right, am a friend of yours, private friend. Yeah, and someone uh, tell, says, look my son, he has just passed engineering and uh, you see, can you put him somewhere? So, then I say, all right, let me see, I have got a friend here working in a good company. So, I send the biodata and phone you and say, I am sending the biodata, see if you have a vacancy, but select him on merits, means give him a chance. Well, it depends. Favor means it depends on the company. There are companies which said we 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 were very much welcome the referral because if you if you don't have to advertise, you have saved the money. Let us say a case where for a post you normally would have advertised and you would have got let us say 20, 30, 40 applications for it. But from your known sources, you have already got referral 20, 30, 40. You may say let us not spend the money on the advertisement. Let us interview these people if they are meeting our requirement after screening the application, interview them. If you find someone good, take them. But sometimes referral is that you may get someone who is referring a candidate who is no good. He wants the candidate to be taken as a favor, all right, because he wants, all right, to push someone's case who is undeserving then the company must decide what they want to do. Many of the companies will not accommodate, some may accommodate. Maybe it is from a very powerful person who can help the company to make lots of money in some ways. If they simply take one person and give him a job, so it depends on the management's policy. But nowadays with competitive economy, you see where there is competition more and more companies will not be willing to do it. Because what happens when you take a referred candidate who does not fit into your organization, he becomes a unproductive asset in the sense, because he is not giving output, he is not doing the job. So, if he is not doing, someone else has to do the job. So, you hire one more meritorious person to do the job. So, you are wasting money. No? Therefore, when competition was not there, such a thing could be accepted or tolerated by some units, some organizations, not all. But now, I suspect more and more, if you, if you take people who are not contributing, you are just increasing your expenses and which will ultimately reflect, reflect on the cost of your product or the service. So, those expenses have to be recovered from the prices that you set. The price then may be too high, you will not be able to sell it. Therefore, I do not think it will happen now. So, as you say, there are two sides of it. Referred candidates can be good, referred candidates all right, can be good for the company, but at the same time, if the referred candidates do not meet up with your specifications, then it is bad for the company. Okay? Right. Then external is employment exchanges, advertisements of course, employment agencies in the case of lower level professional associations like institution of engineers india or if you want some specialist skills then you will have to go to this you may go to the professional institutions campus recruitment is very popular when when you have the entry level that is you are taking trainees then campus level is very popular word of mouth 
but this is very important for small organizations which do not have brand equity. They pass on by word of mouth okay, and uh, then they uh, in a cheap manner relatively instead of advertising and so on, if they find two or three good candidates, they interview and they appoint. So, word of mouth, what are the examples where they would do it? Say small organizations or a housing society say you want a manager, would you advertise for it? You, know, you would not. So, you would probably pass it through word of mouth and few candidates will come and then you interview them and so on. Then deputation, what is deputation? Different department you deputy him or in very large organizations you may have got within the group 10 companies or 5 companies you know like Tata's have got so many companies under their group each is different company Tata Infotech, Tata Steel, Tata Motor Company. So, in one of the companies if you find that there is a requirement and a vacancy and you find that you can spare a good man from another company then you send on deputation for a limited period of time. Okay. Deputation is, is popular when you are doing projects because then you can get people for a limited period of time. Once the project is over then he can go back to his parent company and raiding. Raiding is what? What is raiding? Raiding is hamla. Huh? That means you have a competitor, you take away people from the competitor. So, you have Infosys and Wipro let us say, they are both competing. So, the HR manager of each will try to lure people from, why from competitor? Because they are doing the same thing, they are the same knowledge base, the employees, they do not require retraining. So, in that sense it is cheaper. Okay. So, raiding also is popular, there are some companies all right, who if there is a, if it is a dominant industry um, with two or three people or let us say it is a consolidated industry with two or three players only who are dominating in that industry. Okay. So, they have a pact with each other, say Infosys and Wipro says look let us have a gentleman's agreement that you will not take our people and we in turn will not take your people. So, th that also exists in industry. Now, how far each of these companies behave in a gentlemanly fashion we do not know, but sometimes they have that agreement. Then evaluation of internal source, you have advantages and disadvantages. Familiarity with own employees, obviously that is advantage, you know how he is, but disadvantage is limited choice. Then better use of talent, why advantage, why is it better use of talent, evaluation of internal, all right. Anyone? Why better use of talent? Because obviously, if you have vacancy which is of a higher or a different more challenging, only then the, the employee himself or herself will be interested in coming, is it not? And you will not offer unless you feel that he or she has got the talent to take a higher job. So, therefore, if you give that and fill that vacancy with the internal, you are better utilizing the talent of your inside person. But the disadvantage is discourages competition. That means, if the word goes round in the market that that company they advertise only for the sake of advertising, they will finally fill it from their internal. So, what is going to happen? If and when you do advertise for a position, people may not apply to you. Okay. Then economical recruitment obviously, because advertising is a huge amount of expense nowadays. Okay, going to campuses is a big expense, but if you have internal is just question of telephone, the department heads agreeing, HR department is told and the letter is of transfer is given. So, it is very economical. Disadvantage is stagnation of skills. Why do you say the stagnation of skills, evaluation of internal source? Because they say that if you take people from outside, you have infusion of as they say fresh blood into the organization. The people who come from outside bring with them certain new ideas, some new practices, good people that you take. 
and it infuses practices which will be more beneficial to the organization. And sometimes if you only take from within the uh, organization, you use the word inbreeding. What is that meaning of inbreeding? That the same people from the same culture, you only transfer them to department to department and nothing new and fresh is coming out. It is the same air uh, which is circulating within the room. No fresh air is coming from outside. So, after some time what happens? It gets stale that air. So, it is always good to have new blood coming from that point of view. Even in universities for faculty recruitment, many universities they have a rule that those who do PhD from their own university, they do not take them immediately. Because if imagine a, position, a situation where PhDs will then become senior if they come as faculty, they will have their own research scholar. Ultimately, you will have all PhDs from the same institute. So, fresh ideas etcetera from other institute may not. That is a kind of inbreeding. That is marrying within the family is inbreeding. So, you do not get fresh talent. That is the reason. And then motivator, all right. Why motivator? Because the employees know that if there is a vacancy, there will be an internal advertisement on our company notice board. We can apply for it. We will get a fair chance. So, people get motivated. On the other hand, you see, every time there is a vacancy, company brings people from outside. Then people get demotivated. They say, here was a chance. You did not give us this a chance. You are taking from outside. So, advantage is motivator and creates conflict. Why do they say that disadvantage? It creates conflict. Ah, because you are from department A, he is from department B. You come in competition, I select you, I do not select him, but you st he still remains an employee. Then he feels bad about it. He says there was favoritism actually because the two bosses, you know, his boss is good friends uh, with, with uh, our boss. Therefore, I did not get a chance, whereas my boss is not good friends. All sorts of things happen. So, there is a potential for conflict. This happens. Any question? So, evaluation of external source, open process, availability of talented candidates, opportunity to select the best candidate, provides healthy competition. These are some of the advantages. On the other hand, disadvantage is very expensive and time consuming. Unfamiliarity with the organization, the new man that comes is unfamiliar, there is a time learning curve, he has to take time before he starts contributing, he has to be trained, discourages existing employee, which we said in the last slide, demotivator. Existing employees feel that why they are taking from outside, they should could have taken from inside and they feel bad about it. So, in short, this is a summary, the recruitment process then is recruitment planning, all right strategy development, in what manner and from which source are you going to get, searching, screening, evaluation and control. Okay. So, this is in sum the recruitment process and usually every HR department or division, they have a specialized section, you know, three or four people who specialize in the recruitment then they keep in touch with the various uh, universities, if there is campus interview or if it is industrial worker, the ITI, industrial training institutes, so they have relationships built up and the, with the newspaper advertisement and so on. So, they specialize, recruitment section it is called. So, here you see personal planning job vacancies. Once you have the vacancies in place, recruitment planning number and type. Similarly, you do job analysis and that is the input to recruitment planning, all right. That is also a input to employee requisitioning and when it is requisition, the search will happen, all right, activation selling the message. From recruitment planning, 
it comes to strategy development where how and when when do you do the recruitment similarly from this it goes to applicant population all right and the applicant population means it is search so you see there is a closed loop control here now from here screening this is screening applicant pool it goes to screening from all these places all right recruitment numbers all right strategy development where and how applications this closed loop goes here and comes to screening from screening potential hires that means those people who can be taken and from here evaluation control to the next after recruitment is selection process okay so this is a conceptual representation of how the recruitment process is done internally vis-a-vis -vis the company's requirement and how then the input or it receives and the output it gives gives to whom for the selection for the final selection and this is just some of the methods recruitment methods the direct method is campus recruitment indirect method advertising in papers professional journals etc why do they call this direct because it's one to one you have the potential hires who are right there and the hirers and the hirers go straight and meet the prospective employees direct this is through a medium you don't go directly you go to adverse newspaper newspaper advertises then they come to you so it is indirect third party method is uh, reinforcement is this is recruitment agency recruitment recruitment agencies management consultants these are usually for higher level posts general managers vice presidents because consultants you know they have access to a data bank similarly recruitment agencies normally are for middle level and lower level they also have large data bank of people with their bio data and the type of job say marketing in various industries then manufacturing in various industries and and it is industry wise they have they have job wise so they have huge computerized data bank so if you send them they have immediately at the back and call they can immediately send emails to people who fit your specification and say we have a vacancy for this would you like to apply and some of them apply when they apply then the agencies will screen the applications themselves and set the applications to the actual company which is doing the hiring then the company all right and they don't tell of course which company to the people who make the applications why it's obvious because then the people may directly contact the companies and bypass the recruitment agency if they bypass the agencies what happens agency loses the commission no you as a company will pay the commission if the through the agency you get is it not so they will give code numbers and so on there are various ways in which you do it to safeguard this keep it secret that this job is from which company they won't tell the people on the data bank similarly they won't tell the address etc of these people telephone numbers to the company that is you because you may also directly phone them ask them to come for interview so these are some of the tricks of the trade as we call it okay now any questions on the recruitment part seems simple enough right easy job same pay would anyone like to join recruitment <laughs> section of hr not so easy not so easy it appears easy because there is a paradox you have thousands of people out there okay but you may not have the type that you require after all your input is requisitions coming isn't it from various departments in your company we want so and so type of people 
and then they write a job description and a job specification. Remember the first topics we took. So, it is not so easy to match and get enough people to apply and if you do not get enough people to apply, how are you going to select? Then you have to tell the department, sorry, no one has applied, in which case you are not doing your job, you cut a sorry figure then. Then department says this is useless, the recruitment department, they cannot get anyone, just two candidates, three candidates they have got, we want a wider selection. So, it is not so easy. However, let me not discourage you, because recruitment also has got its own challenges but you can do the job well. There are a lot of engineers in many, many very good companies who are in charge of the recruitment also, because they have got the analytical ability right? and they are intelligent. So, they can do it in an innovative manner. Next is selection. We said it is two sides of the same coin. So, in essence in recruitment what have you done? You get after searching large number of people that means you generate options for one post you generate several options then these options you give to the management and say now i'm giving you these options you please select from them one two three that's the selection process and this is some definition selection is the process of choosing the most suitable people out of the acceptable people because the option that you put up is as per the job specs and the job description. Anything which falls outside that you will reject, no? you will not put it up for selection. So, who are acceptable and who have applied for the job in the organization both from within as well as outside the organization. Right. And as we said a little while ago, Selection is said to differ slightly from recruitment, whereas selection is a process of choosing the best from amongst the candidates who have applied and are all judged to be suitable for the job. All are suitable, but you select best. Recruitment is a preceding process of searching and obtaining applications from the candidates who are acceptable. However, sometimes they are used synonymously and in fact, we do it, do not we? Before today, you may not have known the difference between selection and recruitment. Now, you know it. Otherwise, we thought recruitment, selection, they mean the same thing and it is used also synonymously. Yes, we want to recruit. They say the first part. So, this is the slight difference in meaning, but recruitment usually means we want to hire and we saw early on hiring is three components, right? First is recruitment that is a search, then selection that is the selection process and then placement. Placement means often you select and you still cannot place, you know why? Tell me why. Bribery. Huh? Bribery. Bribery, what kind of bribery? What kind? No, sometimes what happens? Good candidates, they have multiple offers. They may not choose your company. They have better offered, they join, so you cannot place them. Okay? No, no, not normally. You know, usually what happens? Personal department will always have one member on the panel. Okay. So, if it is a three member committee or two member committee, one will be personal and the other will be the requisitioning department. Say you are from manufacturing, you have sent a requisition for a post. Okay. So, that naturally that department representative has to be there, it is from sales department. So, these two are common always okay. and sometimes you have a third member also from any other department or if it is a higher position, you have from external also. Some people who have knowledge, even in our faculty recruitment, the selection committee for full professor will have an external expert coming from any other university or from any other industry. But for lower, say assistant professor, it will be internal board where you have our own director, deputy director, dean of faculty planning and maybe one or two other professors. Okay. 
So, that is usually the constitution of the committee. So, process of selection is filling the prescribed application form when the candidates come. They have applied, but when, when they come to your organization, you have your own form. So, first they will fill up according to your form. Selection tests, you know that so many people come to our campus for interview, hundreds of companies. They, many have their own tests, many do not have their own tests. Selection interview, which is very important. Reference checks, what is reference checks? In the application form, many of the companies all right, will ask, give two references or three references of people who know you well, but are not your relatives okay, or something like that. Your relatives will only give good reference. They want neutral people. So, you write the name and address telephone number. Sometimes, say some one has referred me as a professor. I may get a call from that company. Professor Kalyan Chakravarti, yes, sir, we are calling from this company. One of the people who applied for this job has given your reference. Sir, in confidence, we want to ask you a few questions about him. Please answer. Then they will ask that how was he in terms of reliability as a person? You know him. And please tell us on a 0 to 5 scale, was he highly reliable or unreliable or somewhere in between? So, I say on telephone. Then what about his honesty and integrity? Then I think is that he had given proxy once. So, then what to do? Then I say, then I tell, well, you know, I would not judge him very low on that, but neither very high. So, the other man understands me. Kuch garbar hai. So, that is why you should not indulge in these practices, because you do not know when it will catch up with you in some, some form or the other. Because in all honesty, I cannot say that he has high integrity. But I also know sometimes young people, you know, out of without thinking, etcetera, ek proxy de diya. That means you should not damn him for life. So, all these considerations are there. But anyway, coming back to the topic, that is what references mean. The references mean that. Okay. Physical examination, of course, medical fitness is always there in all companies and then the final selection. Often what happens, the short list is made by the panel and then it goes to a higher level, you know, who finally select out of that. But many companies say that panel itself is empowered to select one and set for appointment. Application form, which most companies have and you have to fill up is name, age, that is date of birth, sex, nationality, marital status, address, telephone number and now, of course, email ID. This is biographical data. Then next is educational information, degrees or diplomas, year of passing, subjects offered or taken percentage of marks and division stroke class obtained, name of university institution and year of passing, scholastic honors or rewards, training if any. Why do they ask year of passing? That you know, he has told you that no. Say you say, say, say I passed, I passed uh, uh, you know, Madhyamik and then Ucho Madhyamik, you know, IC or I ICSE, then S, then uh, then I did graduate, then masters, and then PhD. Gap, that's the thing. See, there's a gap. We know that between uh, BA and MA, there should be two years, right? If you find that he has done BA in 2003 and MA in 2005 or let us put the other 2002 and 2000 and uh, 2001 and 2004. That means, there are three years and obviously, you as an interviewer will ask questions. No? What happened? Did you fail? Were you sick? Did you drop out? What happened? Because this is one of the things required to judge. Similarly, if, if in one year he has passed, then you have to ask which university is, does this university have a one year program? Is it a proper MA, master's degree or is some other kind of diploma or certificate. 
So, therefore, the year is important. Scholastic honors, awards, and training. Then, third category in that form, you will always have experience. So, one is biographical data, educational experience, then work experience. So, company's name, number of years, position held, responsibility profile, achievements. Okay. Then, members of professional bodies. To see that apart from uh, working in one company, whether you had affiliation in your profession with other professional bodies. Remuneration present and expected, extracurricular information and references. So, this is usually the common denominator for all the companies application form. Some ask many more questions also, okay. but this generally this is the minimum which is there common to all. Then, as I said earlier, some people take tests, you know, in the selection procedure. So, selection tests are an objective and standardized means to measure, measure a standardized measure of a simple, of a sample behavior. Okay. Some of these are psychological tests, some are aptitude tests to find out the aptitude. A test is a systematic procedure of comparing the behavior of two or more persons. The whole idea is to have objectivity, because when you have a panel interviewing, they are subjective, remember, because three or two human beings are interviewing and many things come in, perception we have studied about it, you know, does not it come into play, attribution theory that it also comes into play and so many other human factors come into play. So, you try to balance that by having a test score which gives you some objectivity. Different people taking the same exam under same conditions. So, the scores will therefore, give you some objectivity about their comparative merit. Okay. Then a sample of an aspect of an individual's behavior, performance and aptitude that is what it gives. All tests are first psychological and then tests of specific abilities and skills that is psychological and aptitude tests. Then you have a variety of tests which have been designed by psychologists, you know, large number of general aptitude tests and specific skill tests for the purpose of selecting employees are available to the employer. You can buy them, buy the rights and there are people, many of these tests who are licensed to apply the tests and interpret the tests, right. And usually big companies have in their HR department people who hold that license, who are certified to test. All tests can be divided into two classes, ability tests and personality tests. Why? Because it is not enough for a company if you are able to do a job. Company wants to know in advance, will you do the job at all? You may have the ability, but you absent yourself, all right? Or you do not do the job, you cheat on the job. So, such things are very important, that is the reason. Then in the ability test, what they normally do is they have aptitude tests which predict future ability or performance. So, prediction may come true, may not come true. Achievement tests, what a person can do on skills and knowledge already acquired. Intelligence test, general ability for intellectual performance, general ability. Remember, it is not a guarantee. Judgment tests apply knowledge in solving a problem. So, these are the kinds of ability tests that you have. And then you have the second category that is personality tests. And here you have interest tests to find out a person's area of interest. Then you have personality trait tests. Remember, when we are talking of personalities, we said that there are certain theories, this trait theory. Trait means individual's own attributes, right? Measure the dimensions of personality. So, whether he has internal locus of control, external locus of control, high Machiavellian type of personality or what, they try to measure that. 
aptitude test attitude not aptitude attitude test is very important because the attitude of of an individual is of enormous interest and value to the organization organization when they do training they say there is always three things you train your employees for one is knowledge one is skills and third is attitude you train people also to have positive attitude and to start with if you take an employee with a negative attitude it becomes very detrimental to the company even if his knowledge is very good and skill is very good he always has a negative attitude and this inhibits good performance and also it upsets fellow employees <coughs> now as i said tests are no guarantee so it is recognized you as an employer when you interview people you must recognize this limitations of tests are generally the tests are not very good predictors of performance and may be used only as supplements so you have test score here it's a supplement rely more on your interview your collective judgment of the panel they are also good for screening out if you have a large number of people it gives you a method of screening out people because it's impossible maybe to interview 5000 candidates no so it test can screen it out and um, test should be designed and administered only by competent and trained and certified persons i told you all these psychological tests and aptitude tests you require certified people so if you don't have if you are a small organization but there are others who are certified whom you can hire to carry out your test and pay him a lump sum for that test should be validated in the organization in which they are administered that means what is the validation process it's a slow process of trying to find a correlation over a number of years between the test scores of employees whom you finally selected and hired and the scores on his performance appraisal over the years by his various bosses in the department to get a kind of validation right and uh, tests have been for, have been found not formed found found to predict failures better than success think about it so tests do have a value if they predict this fellow has got a negative attitude okay if you still hire him the chances are you'll find that he has failed to do the job but if it says he has a very positive attitude chances are not very high that he will always be a good employee with positive attitude so it is better to predict failures than success the table given below is a summary of the validity of various tests as predictors of job proficiency and this is the table i'll read it out but not all of it you can see it in the textbook prescribed so here is a job intellectual ability spatial and mechanical ability these are different tests perceptual ability motor ability and personality traits and here you have job which is supervisor clerical this is not exclusive it should be executive clerical sales <coughs> protective service vehicle operator etc and this is the type of validity say in case of executive intellectual ability moderate all right moderate plus moderate low so executives are not very good at working we know <laughs> you have a low and so on selection low predictability is 20 these are the factors they applied to use the word whether low or high depending on the scores which came out in this test you can see it later important is selection interview generally accepted that there is no substitute for a good selection interview very important other than face to face interview that's why even in education institution we have a viva right viva is nothing but a 
interview to find out how much the student has learnt and knows. It is far more reliable than a test paper. It is the only way to find out correctly the candidate's looks, manners, bearing, grooming, speech, confidence level, the stance and posture, interaction style, clarity of thinking and how his personality affects others. It is also the best way to find out the candidate's motivation, initiative, stability, perseverance, work habits and judgment level. And you have several types of interviews. You have the preliminary interviews for screening out uh, and it is done by lower level managers, it is basically for shortlisting. After that, you have the interview which is patterned or standardized interview, the interview parameters like what kind of information is to be elicited. So, the panel members get a checklist, they ask questions on that, yes, that is why standardized in what manner the interview is to be conducted, how much time has been allotted. Then we have depth interviews, the interview is aimed to find out in a holistic way everything about the candidate like biographical data and depth, family data and depth, interests and hobbies, honors and awards, motivations and ambitions. Okay. Interesting part is it is aimed not only to find out suitability for the job, but for the suitability for organizational fit. He may be very good, but he may not fit the culture of the organization, particularly for higher level and middle level also, this is important. This is very interesting, stress interviews. These are usually conducted for stressful jobs. The methodology is designed to put the interviewee under a stress and evaluate how he performs. Example, too many questions at short intervals, frequent interruption, derogatory remarks designed to intimidate or provoke long periods of silence. So, when he walks in, no one looks at him, he is standing there at the door, you know. So, he, he, he does not know what to do and then when he starts coming and he sits down, someone says, we did not ask you to sit down, okay, then he says, sorry, sir, he is standing. So, stress is being given. Huh? Limitations of interview, impossible in a short time to assess. Interviewer's capability or competence is also important. In fact, many companies, they have training programs, training executives and managers how to interview well. Okay. Interviewer's biases and prejudices, they are human beings. Halo effect, we have learnt. He answers one question well, you think that is very good, even if he cannot answer the others. That is your human frailty as an interviewer. Job ability is difficult to judge in an interview. Panel members may be victims of group think, we have studied this group think in decision making topic in the evaluation made, time consuming and expensive. And effective interviewing, some tips, a proper resume should be given to the interviewers, the interview panel and interview format for eliciting information from the candidate should be given to the interviewers. Evaluation criteria should be provided to the interviewers, set of general guidelines should be given to the interviewer. All this is the job, remember, of the HR department. Suitable interviewing facilities should be provided like private room, noise free, etcetera. It is preferred that interviews have been exposed, interviews have been exposed to some training. Read this as interviewers. have been exposed to say same tra some training on how to interview effective, effectively, courteousness, emotions in interactions with candidates, empathy with candidates, sensibilities, etcetera. And research findings on interviews, structured interviews are more reliable than unstructured, these are research findings. Interviewers are influenced more by unfavorable than favorable information. A bias is developed early in the interview in the minds of the interviewers and this tends to be followed in the final evaluation decision, favorable or unfavorable. Okay. Intelligence is the attribute most valid, validly evaluated in an interview. Likewise, Interpersonal skills and motivation are probably best evaluated by an interview. 
Allowing the interview adequate time to talk makes rapid first impressions less likely. Allow him to talk instead of asking him questions all the time. Non-verbal as well as verbal interactions influence evaluation decision. Experience interviewers rank the candidates in the same order, although they differ in the proportion that they will accept, which is true. We find it in our selections on admissions uh, of candidates uh, as students in our MBM course. We have so many panels, right? The scores may differ, but usually you will find the ranks are the same, because we have the same level and experienced interviewers on the panel, various professors. Final selection and job offer candidates selected as a final interview are shortlisted and reference checks are made. That is where you have to be careful, you know, I, as I told you. Job offer is usually subject to physical fitness as per organizational norms. Time limit for acceptance to the job is usually stipulated, which is very practical because you cannot wait, no? you have to fill up the vacancy. So, you give them time that this offer is made okay, subject to its acceptance within a period of 30 days from the date of this offer or something like that, after which it shall automatically huh, be invalid. And then you are as an employer, you can make the same offer to some other candidate whom you have put as number 2 in the selection. Okay. So, this ends the chapter or topic on recruitment and selection. And uh, next class, we will look at performance management, very important.